This is the Women's Hockey Life Podcast with host Jacqueline Hawkins. Welcome to another episode of the Women's Hockey Life Podcast, empowering women and girls in hockey. We're going to be talking in depth about what it really takes to be unstoppable on the ice and in life. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the mindset of the most successful women as they mastered the game and went on to even bigger successes in life because they mastered it. As always, shout out to our sponsors, the Hockey News Sports Illustrated. Thank you for helping us put this together. You want to get the magazine, go to THN.com backslash deal. She's an Olympic and world champion, having represented Canada for over a decade. Okay. She's been the starting goalie for three Olympics, even got a couple nods as the tournament's best goaltender. Grew up in Edmonton, spent the majority of her career playing with the boys, you know, including university and, and professionally. She has accomplished so many things in her young life. Just Google her. You'll see it all. I won't go on a, a, a tirade here of listing it out, but she set new records. She's breaking records. She's got Olympic medals. And I'm pretty sure being a first time mom this last August is right up there with all those accomplishments. Shannon Zavados, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. Thanks for having me. Of course, absolutely. It's I, I know you're busy. Um, how old is she now? She just turned eight months. Shaylin, three. Wow. Okay, that's you're in the grind. You're in the thick of it. Oh, she <laughs> um, is crawling. She's standing. She's climbing on everything. I just yeah, it's it's that point where I just can't keep up with her anymore. You're realizing how not baby proof your house is right now. Yes. Yes. I've been like working with her and trying to get her to crawl and stand. And everyone's like, you're going to regret it. You're going to regret it. And I don't regret it all, but it is everything everyone said it would be and more. Yeah. You don't even need to work out anymore. You're just chasing her around. (laughs) No baby lifting. Like my arms, my husband's like, man, your arms are jacked right now. I'm like, yeah, I carry this kid around everywhere. You're the strongest you've ever been, right? She, who needs uh, the weight room who needs olympic training you're good yeah she keeps me in shape for sure oh i love that i love that that's that's amazing i i i mean my twins are almost five so that was a distant memory but i was i was doing the at least i was even you know like one of your biceps probably bigger than the other yes it, yeah. yeah definitely yeah I, I at least had to even it out but uh <laughs> No, that's awesome. I appreciate you taking the time being here. Um, I have so many questions, so many things I want to dive into, but I, I feel like I have to address the elephant in the room with what happened with Worlds. How are the players feeling right now? How are you feeling right now? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've seen everyone's, um, you know, a few key players putting their thoughts out there and they're obviously devastated and, and rightfully so. And I think first and foremost, everyone understands that health and safety is number one and that there's no issue with that. I think the issue is there's been so many events that have gone off without a hitch, keeping everyone safe in multiple provinces, in multiple sports, in different States, in different countries. Um, So I think that's the, the kind of kick in the gut for them. Um, you know, our, our women's, I just looked up our, the women's worlds under 18 was canceled four months before their event even happened. And, you know, it just kind of makes you think like, if that was the world juniors, would they just cancel it four months in advance, in advance and not come up with another plan? Um, and I, I, obviously there's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, and we don't have all the information, but you know, it's just one of those things that's devastating for women's hockey. And, and another thing to put it in perspective is the last world championships I played in. Then I think seven months went by. I got pregnant, was pregnant for nine months. And now my child is eight months. It's been that long since there's been a major women's event. So it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to see. That's wild. That putting in that perspective, right? Like a time frame. Like got pregnant, gave birth. Daughter's eight eight years. Geez, eight months old, and it's like wow. Yeah, it's uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it's months been- and years when you're a mom. <laughs> yes, seriously. So yeah, it's it's been a while uh, for those yeah. players, and you know, uh, me and my husband always joke that like the women's hockey world is just on pause, waiting for me to come back. But <laughs> in, in all seriousness, that it's a that's a long time. That's way too long to go without an event. Um, like I said, obviously health and safety is, is number one, but when you're, when you're seeing other events go off without a hitch, um, it's, it's a little, a little gut wrenching. Take it personal, right? Like what's, what are we not doing? Zero tests that came back positive. We isolated, we got buses to and from the rink to the, like, it feels like every precaution was taken. And like, for me, I'm like, I don't even know what to say about it. Cause I'm like, I just can't help but think that there's information I don't know. Cause I'm like, none of it makes sense. Yeah. Why, uh, yeah. Or why not put it in the U S put it somewhere else. It's, it's more open. And again, yeah. easy to be a critic, right? Sitting here. Exactly. And, and like I said, I, I'm sure there's a ton of moving parts and, and lots of information, but somewhere along the way, you got to think that somebody was like, Hey, we got to do something here. Totally. Totally. So kind of correlating that to where you're at in your life, first time mom, young daughter, are you training again? Are you working out again? Or is it literally just, I pick her up, I put her down and I'm good. <laughs> no, you know what? Regardless of whether I'm playing or not, or whether I come back or not, um, I think I'll always be training. It's just kind of been part of my lifestyle and uh, uh, makes me feel good and gets, you know, I needed to get back into shape after having her. Um, obviously anyone that's ever had kids knows what, kind of what your body goes through. So I've kind of used it as motivation to, uh, you know, whether I'm again, like I said, whether I'm playing or not, I think um, when the day comes, when I officially hang them up and I'm no longer playing anymore, I think I'll still be training. So um, to answer your question, yes, I'm, I'm still training, working out, uh, yeah. coaching a lot. Uh, so I've been on the ice quite a bit. Say so when you say coaching, tell me more about that. So I am actually currently living in Ohio. That's where my husband's from. That's where we're raising our little one. I'm kind of back and forth, obviously, with um, COVID. It's not quite as back and forth um, between Ohio and Edmonton as I'd like. But um, so, yeah, I'm working um, programs called Ohio Hockey Project. So we do group training, individual training, team training. We have camps. Um, So, yeah, just... uh, plugging away there and getting on the ice as much as I can, helping out the little guys. I love that. Giving back and, and getting your fix at the same time, right? Yeah. Yes, I exactly. Yes. So I have to ask, having been a, a player, not at the elite level of you, but then transitioning to being a mom, like the correlations or the parallels, or has the game of hockey helped you be an elite mom now? Oh my gosh. Well, I don't know about an elite mom, but the, don't be so hard on yourself I'm sure you're doing great she tests me more than hockey ever could I mean the patience and the oh man she's just she like I said she keeps me on my toes um the sleep deprivation you know I could I could never sleep after games and yeah. I feel like I'm just kind of rolling right into that with her because I don't sleep ever Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot you can kind of take out of it. I mean, I think being a a goalie, it's, um, you can't really get frustrated. You know, when a a goal gets in, you just get back in there and the more you focus on it, the worse you are. So same thing as a mom, you know, something goes wrong. She has a little, little meltdown or whatever. It's just, okay, how do we get through it? Let's get on to the next. Totally. And that's the hardest part. Like even my kids, they're they're a bit older, but like when they're having a meltdown, freaking out, the worst thing you can do at least with my kids is freak out because then yeah. they just get off the energy. So you have to be patient, like you said, yeah. and just w- ride the wave and, and it will pass. Yes. Oh, hi. Oh, and especially with her because she can't talk yet. So it's like, well, exactly. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and guess or get frustrated or whatever. Like uh, I'll clearly something's wrong. So it's just, it, it is what Tired, it is. Hungry, need a diaper change. <laughs> like, it's probably one of those three, right? <gasps> The the wind's blowing the wrong way sometimes. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Yeah, that's pretty accurate too. Yeah. <laughs> so then that kind of segues into the book. You yes. wrote a book. Everybody loves to play. Yeah. Did you ever think you would write a children's book? Never. Never in my wildest dreams. Um, but it was one of those things. I was pregnant. I wasn't playing, obviously I was pregnant, but it was also the start of COVID and the lockdowns. And um, so I basically was, like I said, pregnant, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything, couldn't get on the ice. 
um, even if I wanted to. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And I like to draw. I like to paint. Um, you know, I had painted a few pictures for her room and I actually had put one up online and somebody was like, so when is your children's book coming out? And I'm like, hmm. So it started out just kind of as like a little pet project for myself. Didn't think it would go anywhere. Kind of assumed it would turn out horribly. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but the more I got into it, it was super fun and actually turned out pretty good. I mean, it's not the best children's book you'll ever buy. Or I think it's unreal. I did all the drawings, all the words, obviously everything start to finish, published yeah. it myself. Um, so it's, it's no Picasso, but it, it turned out really, really well. And I'm really proud of it. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun thing to kind of keep me motivated during this crazy pandemic and while I was pregnant. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. I had a lot of fun doing it. I think it's, again, you're being too hard on yourself. I think that's what every mom <laughs> and biggest Christian themselves will do. But just even the messaging of like dealing with adversity, overcoming it. And again, being patient, being persistent in that pursuit of happiness, success, the goal, whatever. Like, it's so simple and it's a quick read, but I'm like, that's what I love. And obviously that's well, attention span. And, right? and that was, that was kind of the other part to it too, was as I was getting further along in my pregnancy, we started receiving children's books and Honestly, I mean, they're fun to read, but at the same time, it's like, well, what am I reading her? Like, these are just words on paper that happen to rhyme. Like, she's not going to learn anything from this. Like, okay, they're fun colors, but like, I want to read, if I'm going to read her something, I want it to, I want her to get something out of it. Even though she's little, one day she'll be able to read it, but I wanted it to have a message that I was like, what, what would I tell her? if I could write a book. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to write a book so that I can just tell you that message directly. And, and hopefully for all the other kids too. Um, I tried to make it the, it's, it's obviously a little bunny, so it's gender neutral. Um, you know, it's, it's hopefully can relate to everyone. And it does. It's, it's perfect in that respect. And I, I think it's, I just respect you so much from like going from, you know, people see you as this elite athlete, right? <laughs> You're like, hey, guess what? I illustrated and wrote a book too. Throw well, something think, else at me. Let's do it. I think that's just, I think that's also just part of being an athlete. It's like, okay, well, I can't compete right now. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. Like what I need a challenge. I need something to do. So yeah, it was kind of a it was kind of a way to like release all yeah. my I don't know what you call it, but the inner athlete in me, to even, even though it wasn't obviously a physical challenge, it was, it was kind of more of a, a mental challenge and just kind of give me something to do and something to look forward to doing during this crazy time. Absolutely. And you'll look back on that and, and your, your daughter's going to be like, wow, mom, you did this for me. This is cool. And you give a shout out to your parents. And, and I, I yeah. love that. And, and has it been reviewed? Well, Has it, you get good feedback. Like what are people saying? Yeah. Um, yes. The, the reviews, um, you know, obviously on Amazon, you can read or uh, leave reviews. So there's some, been some really good ones on there and kind of just like you said, it's uh, a lot of people just like the message in it. Um, it's a cute, fun, quick read, like I said, or like you said, and, uh, yeah, I've got really, really great feedback from it. That's awesome. Good for you. And we'll make sure we'll, we'll link it. So if anybody hasn't heard about it or seen it yet, they can, uh, Go check it out, support you, and, and really yeah. send a good message to your, your kids, your daughters, if your teachers, if your kindergarten teachers, like, get the book, read it. It's, yeah, that, you know, actually, it's that was one of the reviews is uh, one of the, per, one of the uh, somebody that bought it had bought a few and brought it to the school because they wanted uh, the kids to be able to read it. So, um, yeah, it's it's been really fun. Like I said, the reviews are great. Um, exclusive on Amazon right now, uh, .ca or com. So, yeah, you can check it out there. Totally, totally. Let's transition back to you, your playing career. Um, again, kind of focusing on the mindset, like being a goalie. I don't know how you guys do this. Like, I have to tell quick stories just so you can understand my love and appreciation for you as a goalie and any goalie I've had and goalies in general. <laughs> when I was coaching at the University of Connecticut, something happened where after Christmas break, two of our three goalies couldn't come back. I think there was a death in the family, one there was travel, whatever. So coach Mac, who's still coaching there was like, Hawk, you're going in, you're putting the pads on. And I was like, I was a forward and a defenseman. Like, what are you doing? And I'm, <laughs> I'm past my playing career. So I was like, oh. I was like, okay, putting the equipment on alone is hard. Standing just in the net is exhausting. 
And our assistant coach at the time, he's still there. Casey Handrahan was like, okay, I'm going to warm you up. And I was like, crap. And he was just like lobbing them at the blocker trapper, like the typical warm up, Right. And at one point he's like, Hawk, stop reaching for the puck. I go, what do you mean? He's like, when it comes to your blocker, you're going like this. I was like, yeah, I'm getting it away from me. Like, he's like, let it hit you deflect. I was like, no, I never coached goalie. So I was like, no, 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 no. But we had one player on our team who she could like the hardest shot. And she came down on the wing, warm up, whatever. And it like went into my glove and I did the over-exaggerated glove save but not yeah, because dude. I meant to it was such a hard shot that it just like went into my glove and it was, like, <laughs> the moment. <laughs> it was awesome but I was That's like awesome so much respect for what you do and and even just the mindset of letting a goal in having to bounce back quick right like that's that's a struggle for most people in general but as a goalie you feel like you're the last line of defense right yeah so, like did you ever have an experience or a time in your career where you're like you question your ability Always. Yeah, always. I think people always do. Yeah. I mean, I think no matter what in life you're doing, whether it's school, your job, being a mom, you're always questioning, am I good at this? Am I doing it the right way? Am I um, whatever? But I think that's that's the fun part about being an athlete or being especially an athlete, because who cares if you're not doing it the right way or if you are, if you do suck at it, it's a sport. It's a, it's a fun game that you're supposed to go out there and have fun doing. So if you're not good at it, oh, well. Um, but I think, I think uh, that's what makes elite athletes is they're able to get over that and, and goaltending, especially you, you gotta have, um, you gotta leave that behind you and, and focus on the good. And, um, I'm sure as in any position, the more you focus on the negative, the worse things get. And again, same goes in life. Um, so yeah, I, I learned, I learned pretty quick um, to, to just move on pretty fast. And, and I, I think that's, uh, again, what also makes um, elite athletes is, is as long as you're out there having fun, um, the, the wins, the losses, you know, <laughs> become a little bit irrelevant as long as you're out there having a good time I think uh the more success you'll have and I think that's kind of the the approach that I always took love that and, and thank you for being honest like yeah of course I question my ability <laughs> probably every day maybe multiple times a day yes, and yes. as a mom I still experience it now like yeah. oh, I'm not good enough I need to do better yes. than the other it's like oh yeah I think being open and, and being able to talk about it is is why I love getting guests like you on here is you're not quote unquote perfect you have those oh. moments of those doubts it's it is what it is I just I saw something that was Ed Milet I think I follow him he's an entrepreneur on on Instagram and I think it was this morning or yesterday and and he coaches a lot of elite athletes and he's like guess what the number one thing is that they struggle with elite athletes like the best of the best he's like confidence yeah confidence like and they're the best but they still struggle with the confidence and believing in themselves and it's like it's no different than anybody else yeah no 100 percent yeah, hundred percent. Like I said, I think whether it's sports or life or your job or parenting, or it, you're always going to have it. You just have to find a way to kind of figure out what's going on, make yourself better, and have fun doing it. I totally agree, and and I know I, I, you guys have a sports psychologist with with Hockey Canada. Eh? Like you guys have worked yep. with multiple over over the years and everything. Oh else. yeah. And that I think. I mean, did you have that growing up? No. No, absolutely not. I think it's, I think um, it's become more popular, obviously, recently and and rightfully so. But no, definitely not there. That was kind of unheard of um, when I was growing up and training and on teams. But yeah, it's definitely, I think, um, probably every um, elite team has some sort of sports psychologist working with the team or individuals or, you know, in some capacity. Totally. And, and I think that's the cool thing too. And, and I'm going to ask the question of, of everyone has different routines, rituals, whatever, whatever works for them, right? It doesn't have to yeah. be cookie cutter. And what, what was your game day ritual or, and was it the same as practice? Um, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, this might be self-proclaimed, but I am not one of those weird goalies. So I've played with some that weird. Have, what do you mean? What? <laughs> I've had some goalie partners that are, and I like that you use the ru- word routine instead of superstition because some people do have superstitions, but I'm, I'm a huge believer that superstitions just get you in trouble because if something's off, 
Yes. It's a little throw your whole day. So definitely routine over superstition, but even routine, I mean, other than wanting to get dressed early so that I had lots of time to kind of get in the zone and visualize and stretch and do whatever I needed. Um, I don't think I really had too much of a routine or. Yeah. Yeah. Just went no, with the flow. I, I just, I just kind of like go with the flow and I, it's in my opinion, every day is different. Every day is going to throw something different at you. Sometimes you're on the team bus and you get there late um, sometimes the meal you want isn't available. I mean, there's, to me, there's no point in having strict, strict routines. I think, um, having loose guided ones is fine, but yeah, I was never big into uh, any of that stuff. That's funny. Cause it, it, again, it depends. Like I've talked to other players and they're like, no, it's this, this, this. And I was like, cool. That works for you. Yeah. For I, me, it's again, literally it, like, if sorry. that works for somebody else hundred percent go for it. It just, it wouldn't have worked for me because if I had strict things and something went wrong, I'd be like, I'd be lost. So nah, just, you're already mentally out of it. Yes, right. exactly. You've, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? You were, you're behind the eight ball already. Yes, I'm exactly. And it's kind of like, and I feel like in, that's how I played my games too. It's just like something's going to happen and you just have to adapt. So I just, whatever that day threw at me, whatever the rink threw at me, it was just, that was my routine that day. I remember getting chirped by one of my coaches about not having a consistent routine. And I'm like, my consistent routine was when I was in my locker before the game and I was visualizing my head. I was yes. like, like giving energy to my body and, and doing all these things that aren't physically tangible. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. it was, it, but I was like, no, that, that just doesn't work for me. I don't want to do a certain thing and take my stick at this time before game, because what if yeah. Like, yeah, we can late to many games before because the bus and this, that, and the other or weather. So no, I just, I like asking the question too, just so that other people hear, like do what works for you, find something, yep. but it doesn't have to be strict or rigid, but if that works for you, then do it. Yes. Because everyone, like I said, I've played with lots of goalies or players that, that do have strict superstitions and everything else. And like you said, that works for them, but it couldn't work for me. No. Yep. Totally. Totally. So another big question for me, for you is like, and maybe there's multiple moments, um, but thinking of like the biggest hurdle or obstacle or something you've had to overcome in your hockey career, maybe even your life. Um, and it kind of walk me through what it was, how you, how you addressed it, how you got over it. Maybe you're still overcoming it. Who knows? Um, I don't know if there's a, one specific moment I think as I, I and I keep relating these two because obviously the the older I've got the more I've realized how similar a silly sport is to life and and kind of how you can learn from each one but I think in life and in hockey for me I think there's constantly hurdles um but it's it was kind of just another like okay adapt get over this figure out a way through um like for example the last olympic year i mean i'll give you one example um i had hurt my ankle before the season even started um we had w what we call boot camp um the summer before every olympics i had hurt my ankle and I've, I've had a lot of ankle trouble my entire career and this was pretty bad and it got worse and it got worse um, to the point where I had to get what they call a, a PRP injection. It's where they kind of like, I don't know all the scientific terms behind it, but they take your own blood, they spin it, and then they like inject it into the injured area to kind of like promote growth and like um, okay. rehabilitation and trying to get it, you know, healed, I guess is the word. Um, so I was out for a really long time. And then as I was rehabbing, working really hard to get back, um, my, I think it was my first game back or one of the first ones back was against Team USA. So just right in there in Minnesota. And I tore my MCL. So <laughs> out I am again. And it, this was like weeks before the Olympics. Um, so up until then, I think I had played two games maybe. And then... So I had to get another PRP injection. So for the first half of the season, I was in a walking boot, walking cast. 
and then I tore my MCL. So I was on crutches again and we decided to do the injection again right before leaving. And I wasn't even cleared to play when we got uh, to Pyeongchang. So yeah, I think that was definitely a huge hurdle, but it was like one of those things where I'm like, well, what can I do? There's literally nothing I can do other than have a positive attitude and work hard to get back on the ice. I had no idea if I was going to play or not. The, the coaches hadn't seen me play all year. I think, like I said, I think I had played maybe two or three games the entire season and the team had played, I think like over 50. So it was, uh, it was just one of those things where I think, like I try to do in life and in jobs and as a mom, it's like, well, what can I control? And I couldn't control my injury. I couldn't control how fast I came back. I couldn't control whether the coaches were going to play me or not. What I could control was, can, you know, my rehab off the ice, icing, making sure I'm doing everything right. And then when I get on the ice, just perform the best I can in the limited amount of time I can. And um, obviously um, had had uh got the starting job by the end of the tournament um and and got a lot of games in but yeah it was just one of those things where it was like you know what do you do and that's so my team and I with women's hockey life we, we have this other whole branch where we help navigate high school age players through the whole recruiting process for college and one of the biggest things that we try to remind them of especially during COVID is like no one anticipated this, right? You can't change it. Yeah. It was in place that you can't do anything about. So control what you can control. Yeah. And that's your, your mindset. It's your attitude. It's, you know, stick handling in your basement or doing something else where you're ready for when it, everything opens. And again, it's different U S versus here. We're in a third lockdown here in Ontario, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, did you always have that mentality from a young age or was that something that through time, experience, injuries, having to overcome these obstacles, you learned like the more positive you were, the easy, easier it was to get through those challenges. Yeah, definitely. Cause I think, and I still have the moments where I do get down and I get whatever, you know, like everyone does. Um, but I think definitely, especially when I was younger, you know, you get down, you get um, discouraged or whatever the case may be. And then it, it I'm going to translate it to goaltending is the more you do that, the worse you play. So same thing in life, same thing, you know, with your rehab or whatever, if you're, if you're down and discouraged and you're not going to get anything out of it. So I think that's definitely something you learn over time. And um, I think it's definitely a skill that I learned in hockey that I like to translate, you know, into the real world. I love that. Cause I was going to ask you what's, what's the game taught you, but you just answered it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So many things. There's so many things that just are so relatable because it's like, I think controlling what you can control is one of the biggest things is it's just, and hockey is a great way to learn things because like I said before, it's just, it's a silly sport. So it's like, whatever, if I, if I'm hurt and I can't play, well, whatever, it's just a game. You know I mean? This isn't like life or death or like, you know, something. So it's a good way to, and that's why I love, and I hope Shay plays hockey or any sport for that matter, because I think it just teaches you a lot of life skills. I, I think Shaylin's got a good role model in front of her. And with your luck, just like mine, um, you know, both, both clearly you're, you guys, Carl, you guys both played hockey. So it's like let's play hockey, let's do this. But I have a feeling my, my twins are going to be into ballet, arts, dance, something I know nothing about. My friends always joke that that's what Shay is going to be into too, which, which is fine, but hey, uh, find I, your passion kids. I'll yes, support exactly. it. And yeah. if they become artists, I'm calling you. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know about that, but I, yeah. 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 I, I think that might work out. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but uh, I have to ask you just about, I mean, we talked about the worlds a little bit too, but the state of women's hockey. Um, obviously we've got two leagues going on. There's lots of teams overseas, leagues overseas. I think the game's growing. I think it's awesome. Um, but where do you see the game in like two, three, four, five years? If you had a crystal ball, what would it look like? I don't know what it's going to, going to look like, but I'll tell you what we all hope it looks like is all the best players, all the best resources, 
all the best coaches, all the best staff, all the best media, fans, everything under one umbrella. I mean, it's just, it's just that's the only thing that makes sense. I, I mean, no, it has you to see be. it in every other sport. You see it on the men's side. It's just it doesn't make sense to have some here and some there. And, well, you can have a little bit here. But and it's just it's it's hard right now because I don't know. I don't know a lot about the teams overseas, but I, I know in North America, there's, there's nowhere really that you can be a full-time athlete. So it's, it's hard to move the game ahead. If you're on the ice, like imagine Sidney Crosby who just like picked up a stick twice a week and his practice was at 9 PM and it was like for an hour. I mean, he wouldn't get better. The league wouldn't get better. The players wouldn't get better. Um, so I think just to grow the game, I, I mean, the game has come so far and with not a lot. So I can only imagine what it's going to look like in the future when the players have every resource available, all the ice time they want, tons of games, all the players in one spot. Um, so, it, I mean, it's exciting because it can only go up from here. <laughs> Well, that's what I was saying. Like, it's exciting. And the way you talk about it, I'm like, everybody knows there's got to be one league with the best truly coming together. And it's hard yeah. to do that. And, and I mean, as far as overseas, like I know in Russia, I had a former teammate or a former player I coached that is over there and, and making a living and making money and it's profitable yeah. and this, that, and the other. And there's, you know, the Swiss league, the Swe- Swedish league, Finnish, like there's other leagues that are comparable, but yeah, how cool would it be to get everybody under one roof? Yeah, I have, have a couple of leagues maybe, but like I know that obviously there's a the KHL, the NHL, and everything else. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's always going to be multiple leagues. It's just let's build this infrastructure where the best of the best are here. We got the resources, like you yeah. said. The product will sell itself. Yeah, it's. I mean, you see it every four years in the Olympics. People want to watch it. We we've seen it. You know, the girls at at the uh, NHL All Star Game. I mean, it's we've they've proven it time and time again. It's just getting that consistently. Yeah. And maybe a little bit of the whole patience thing that we're learning as parents. Now we got to be patient, right? It's not going to happen overnight. We've, we've the player, these poor players. I mean, I, I, I know I'm, I'm still part of the PWHPA and obviously not, not competing right at this moment, but it's been a, it's been a grind two years with, you know, with, I mean, obviously the league going on, there's great players there, but with our Olympic players, national team players, not really having a league in the last two years. So, um, they, you know, all the players, um, all the players in North America, in the world deserve um, just a spec- spectacular place to play. Totally, totally. And, and I respect and admire what everyone's doing, being persistent and, and being patient and just fighting for what's right, using, yeah. our, using our platform. So, um I love that. I got to ask one more hockey related question because I love okay. from a goalie perspective, like who is the hardest player teammate or opponent to have to stop unpredictable. <sighs> you can name multiple if you can't think of just one, but I'll oh, put it on the spot. it's definitely going to be multiple. Yeah. I mean, by far, hands down, Poulin is the best player in the world. I don't think there's any disputing that. Um, I, I love watching her. She's she's kind of like a, a Sidney Crosby. Like, she can do everything. She's so skilled. Her shot is so hard. Um, but from a goalie's point of view, she's also good defensively. Like, she'll block shots for me. Um, so she definitely, in practice, will, will catch me off guard with how quick her release is and uh, things like that. Um, I think one I've always struggled with is is Hillary Knight because she's just she's similar um where she can kind of do it all she'll get in front of the net she'll she'll get the dirty goals um but she can also score the nice ones too so I think those two probably stand out um quite a bit on uh, Brianna Decker is obviously another one she's uh, a skilled player totally totally you didn't say Shay is she not sniping on you yet or what not quite um I posted a video the other day so I always joke that I don't want her to be a goalie because I've seen what my parents go through and like how nervous they are before games and during games and like when I was growing up they're like yeah like if you had a really good game everyone was our friend and if you didn't play good like people literally ignored us or like basically said it was your fault (laughs) so I'm like I don't want Shay to be a goalie and then so my husband uh, played professionally as a D-man. 
So I'm like, okay, she can be a D-man. Like, hopefully, hopefully she's D-man. So we were playing the other day, and I mean, she's only eight months old. So she's just, she's just this tiny little thing, but she's sitting up. And I was like throwing a ball at her, like quite hard, a softball. It was very soft. So don't, I'm not like <laughs> child abuse here, but like, I was like, well, I first started like lobbing it at her and she thought it was so funny. So then I started throwing it like fairly hard and she was like, it was like hitting her chest and then she'd go get it. And I'm like, she's going to be a goalie. And I'm like, so I, so I sent it to my parents. I'm like, I think Shay has the sickness. She likes this way too much. She likes oh. getting balls chucked at her. She enjoys it. She does, yeah, yeah. She might have a little bit more of your genes. I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but uh, I know it's still to be determined, but it wasn't a good start. Yeah. You know, you're like, I'm not doing that. Girl. Here's some paint. Go. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Before we wrap up, um, got to go to the signature question here, which your book might just be the answer as far as you know, you going back to when you were a little girl, a little kid. And if there's one thing you could tell yourself, what would it be? You know what? I've been asked this question before and kind of to go off of it is if I could say something to myself, it would be do everything the way that you did it because I just loved playing the game and that's all that mattered even up until this day. So I think that's what got me excited to go to the rink. It's what it excited. It got me excited to overcome challenges to um, just literally everything about the game. And I think, I think I relate it back to everything in life. I think um, just love and enjoy what you're doing, whether it's playing hockey, whether it's ballet, whether it's painting, whether it's being a mom, the more fun you have, the more you learn and the more you get out of it. And the more everyone around you gets out of it as well. Gratitude. Grateful, right? Be grateful yeah. for what you have, what you're doing. And it uh, comes back tenfold. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Janet, absolute pleasure doing this with you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we will, uh, link everything on, on, as far as how to follow you, if they're already not following you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, your website, we'll link the book. We'll, we'll get everything coming back to you. And, uh, hopefully we can do this again at some point. Yeah, you betcha. Keep getting the word out there. Love what you guys are doing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Until next time, everybody stay safe, stay healthy and keep chasing your dreams. Thank you for listening to the Women's Hockey Life podcast with Jacqueline Hawkins. To learn more about Jacqueline's mission, please visit womenshockeylife.com to learn more.